and then all right can you guys see that i can't find my All right, so thank you so much everyone for taking time out of your, um, can you guys still see that? It's my, my screen's just switched on me. I can still see it. Okay, um, so thank you everyone for taking time out of your whatever day of the week this is, Monday, to listen to us go through this PowerPoint. Um, some of these points are pretty belabored at this point um, because we've been doing this PowerPoint for several years or this training rather for several years. Um, with me tonight is Melissa Hellervick Bing. She's our meet referee at the state championships, and Adele Woodrow. She's our high tech operator or AO, if you will, um, or just all around great gal. Um, and we're going to run through some things that we have seen over the, the years um, cause a lot of disqualifications, and we know how to avoid them. And we're going to impart that on you, and hopefully, um, we can get through this year without having. Um, disqualifications for the common things that we see. So you'll see that a lot of things are repeated in this particular presentation, and that is by design. Um, the more it's repeated, I feel like the more often it comes up and the more it needs to be mentioned, um, just to make sure that we are all on point. All right, so just in general, um, please do not, under any circumstances, create your own dat uh, databases. If you create your own database, it doesn't upload properly to Adele's when she gets it. And so then that is, uh, I don't even know how much time she has to spend changing everything so that the, the files are exactly the same and everything uploads properly. So if you've created your own database, your results will be significantly delayed in, in posting. So we have all the databases are available on the FHSA or in a Dropbox, an FHSA Dropbox. I sent out the link a couple of times to all of the high tech operators, meet referees, and host school head coaches. If you need that though, um, please email me. I think everyone should have it at this point since the district meets technically started today. Um, within those databases that you grab from our website, please don't change anything. Um, if a location has changed or if a time has changed, that's fine. But don't change any of the school codes or any of the setup that um, is already in place in those databases. Um, <clears throat> when you import the, the entries, the team entries, verify, because sometimes the schools make up their own. Um, they think that these should be DPHS because that is their high school name and they don't understand the high tech code is different and it's used for a specific purpose. So if you are the one that is importing the entries that you receive from the coaches in the district, please make sure that the school codes are the same or they are changed prior to you uploading everything into your district meet. Um, if you're the one inputting the athletes or if you are a coach, please use your athlete's full legal name and that is the name that's on home campus. That's the name they're registered under uh, at school. I understand that some kids don't go by their first name. They prefer to be called their, by their middle name, but they're registered in school under Charles, not Michael. So even though he likes to be called Mike, we're gonna need to call him Charles because that's how he's registered in school. Um, so, and also no nicknames. So please use full legal names when you are inputting entries into the databases. We, we don't like to call them exhibition swims because exhibitions are technically not allowed but we have non-scoring heats throughout the season and that's perfectly fine, but they are not permitted at any FHSA state series event. So there's no exhibition or non-scoring heats permitted throughout districts, regionals, or at the state meet. Um, a few years ago, the NFHS established a guideline for um, potential timing equipment malfunctions. I'll send that just as a, a reference to all of the high tech operators and meet referees along with a couple of other supporting documents tomorrow. Uh, once I have the link to this recording, I'll send everything out, but um, that, that does exist. I don't know if anyone has had to refer to that, but I will make sure that you all have that um, before the swim portions of all these meets get going. Um, all coaches have an electronic copy of the rule book um, that they should have at their disposal. All of your FHSA certified referees who are your meet referees have hard copies of the rule book. 
So if you need a rule book, somebody should definitely have one. Uh, check to, you can check to make sure or check to see if your meet is uh, USA Swimming sanctioned or observed. I don't know if I'm using the right words, but that is nothing. That doesn't have anything to do with our office. We, we have a great working relationship with USA Swimming and we allow our meets to be observed. Um, we've never had an issue or a problem with that, but that we don't handle any of the paperwork. We don't, I, I don't even know who to contact. I just know it's the Florida office of USA Swimming, but um, you are, if you wanna have your meet observed, that's fine. You will need a separate copy of the results to send to USA Swimming though. Um, and then down here is a link to our um, rules and publications page. So if you've been on our website within the past couple of years, we have changed our website over. Some of the stuff might be hard to find. There is a sports specific manual for swimming that has a lot of detail in it. Things like um, entry limits and um, how to accommodate swimmers with disabilities recalling heats I and mean, there's all kinds of stuff in that um, coach's manual or in that sport manual and that is the link where you can find that so moving right along i'm not going to read all of this but um, if you have been around for a real long time we used to have state entry lists which we don't have anymore we used to use a program called c2c which we don't use anymore now we have home campus and we've done away with a lot of the extra work that athletic directors had to do. So we don't make them put in a roster at the beginning of the season and then also put in um, a state entry list. We just have the roster. So you've all received emails from me about making sure your rosters are up to date. The issue that we've run into with home campus is that kids will fall off of the roster. So the AD may have put the roster in, in August, but in September, um, Jimmy's physical expired, so he's no longer eligible. And just through the course of the season, people don't necessarily check that. So I've asked for the home campus rosters to make sure they match your district entry lists. So your home campus roster is your list of eligible athletes. Your district entry list is who is swimming which meet. Unfortunately, these two programs don't talk to each other. So they are, for the time being, two separate entities which require a little bit more work making sure that they match. If you are checking entries, so if you're putting in entries and you are cross-checking the district entries with the um, home campus roster and you see kids that are not on the home campus roster, just send me their names. You guys don't need to do anything beyond that. Um, just doing that in and of itself is a courtesy. Uh, no other sport does that. So it is the responsibility of the coach and the athletic director to make sure that all of their kids are eligible. And if they swim an ineligible athlete, that is, that is on them. Um, so by whoever's putting in the entries, by cross-checking those lists um, and, and catching, I mean, I've already gotten a ton of names. By catching all those, you're, you're saving those schools disqualifications and potential further um, sanctions by swimming swimming in eligible athletes. So just send me their names. I, I, I feel like that's a lot of work on you guys already. Um, it, if, and I don't want you to have to, to keep spending more time on that. So if you are doing that, send me their names and then finish up the entries. Put the kids in their events. Don't worry about it anymore. I will take care of it with the athletic director. Um, it, it won't impact the kids nine times out of 10. All they have to do is put in their new physical and they're good to go. Um, so just put, put everyone in their events, send me their names if you find them and move on about your business. Uh, suits and caps and logos and whatnot. Um, this hasn't changed at least since I've been around. So suits can only have one manufacturer logo that cannot exceed two and a quarter square inches and no one dimension can be longer than two and a quarter inches. Uh, the FINA barcode or the FINA checkmark is not a manufacturer logo. That just certifies that the, the suit is um, suitable for competition. So that, that wouldn't count as a manufacturer logo. And all suits have to be one piece, like totally one piece. Um, and also if you're a new coach this year, um, we do not allow two-piece swimsuits during the warm-up or practice sessions at any time. So everybody in a one-piece suit all the time when you get to the state meet. Um, 
we all know that there's been, if I hear the phrase supply chain one more time, um, we all know that there's been shipping delays and supply chain issues and all kinds of things that have delayed kids getting their suits or getting their caps or what have you. Um, so be flexible with team suits. It's not even a requirement. Teams do not have to wear the same suit. Um, so, but if you do have, if they're all obviously wearing team suits and someone doesn't have one, it is okay. Um, it may be that their suit is still being shipped. So be flexible with that. <clears throat> if you suspect that somebody is in violation of any of the swimsuit policies, please do not, do not approach the athlete. And for all things, the love of all things, under no circumstances should you ever inspect a suit while a child is wearing it. So approach the coach, work it out with the coach, leave the athlete out of it, let the coach deal with their own athlete. Just some examples of some legal swimsuits. Um, tech suits are perfectly fine. I've gotten that question more this year than I have any other year, but kids can wear tech suits as long as they follow the, the logo rules. Um, this one is a better example. These are non-legal suits. Um, so this suit right here has two, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm looking at the picture all the way on the left, the gentleman in the arena suit. Um, that has, it looks like two logos, and I don't think that they can wear full-legged uh, suits. I think it has to stop at the knees. The suit in the middle obviously has two logos on the front, one on the chest and one on the lower leg. And then tieback suits are not allowed at all during competition. They can wear tiebacks to warm up, and your divers can wear tiebacks, but as a, a swimmer swimming in an event during a championship meet cannot wear or any dual meet cannot wear a tie back. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions this year about swim caps. Someone asked if they could have two different, they were told that they couldn't have two different school logos on the swim cap. And there's no rule about that. There's a size regulation. I think it's like four square inches for logos on a cap, but they could have their school name on one side and their school mascot on the other side or their school letters on one side and their name on the other. It can even say like FHSA state swim team 2021 perfectly acceptable. Anything school related can be anywhere on the cap on both sides if they want it, but it still can only have one manufacturer logo. So this um, cap the on the right hand side, the only reason it's not legal is because it has two logos, two manufacturer logos. It doesn't matter that the, the um, mascot or school name or whatever that is on each side is different. That's perfectly fine. It's just the logos that render that white cap illegal. Um, meet committee, uh, this is an NFHS rule that's been in existence probably for 100 years, got to have a meet committee. They should have been established for the district meet at the district planning meeting back in August, but most of them are not. Just make sure that you have, by the end of your coaches meeting, you have a meet committee in place. And this is for anomalies that come up. If you have weather come in, if you have a weird situation come up, um, then you would want to pull the meet committee together. The meet committee does not come together to analyze a judgment call made by an official, and the meet committee does not over or set aside any FHSAA or NFHS rule. Same thing at your regional meet, where obviously a meet committee will not be established when you get there, so there has to be one by the end of your coaches meeting, um, again, to deal with those weird things that come up. I think we've only used it once, and that was because we had weather coming in and we had to change the time of our finals. Um, tape and braces. I've gotten a couple of notes for tape. If your swimmer needs to wear tape, kinesio tape, or just regular athletic tape, they have to have a note. Send it to me, um, and I will send it to the meet referee, and then I always recommend that you have a hard copy of the note with you. Um, if you, for some reason, you don't get a chance to send it to me, just make sure that you have a hard copy of the note signed by a doctor or a certified athletic trainer stating that the tape is medically necessary and the swimmer will be good to go. However, please be advised that kinesio tape or KT tape will disqualify a USA swimmer from having their times entered. Um, joint braces have to have written documentation. I've not had any requests for those. And uh, the compression, like the neoprene compression sleeves are not allowed because compression material is not allowed. Any other uh, tape or medical uh, thing you can send me a note and we'll get that to your meet referee. So scratches and no-shows. This 
Now we're gonna get into what usually causes kids to be disqualified. And the first one is just not showing up. So uh, if you do not show up, if a swimmer does not show up to an event, their season is over. And I don't know how to make that any more cut and dry than that. So if your swimmer swims in event number two and then no shows for event number 18, even if they qualify in event number two, they're not moving on because they, they just didn't show up to their next event. So if you have a swimmer who gets sick, notify the meet referee immediately because there are different um, exceptions for medical scratches. So if you have a student athlete who is notorious for not paying attention and they are being called to their, their event and they don't hear the meet referee call them or hear the announcement of their events or their heat is gonna start and they're just back there chatting it up and he doesn't make it to the blocks, then his season is over or her season is over. So please make sure that your um, swimmers are paying attention when, they're, when their time comes up that they are uh, aware of where they need to be and when they need to be there because in all of my seven years, we've not issued an exception for this policy. Um, and if, you're, if your athlete is a senior, then I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry, but I, we've never issued an exception for this. Um, they have to show up to their events or they have to be medically scratched. So make sure that you're communicating with the meet referee if something comes up during the meet that prohibits your athlete from being where they need to be on time. Um, <clears throat> if you have an athlete, oh, and I guarantee you this will come up regardless of how many times we say it, do not, please stop, please do not scratch anyone out of the database, leave them in there. Please don't take anyone out, let Adele do that. Do not scratch anyone. So even if you have someone medically scratched from an event or no show from an event, leave their names in the database. Um, I'm, I, I can't tell you how many time, how much time we have to waste figuring out why someone was scratched. So please don't, please don't do that. Please stop doing that. Um, so to do. If you are sending in the database, so if you're the meet referee or the high tech operator that's sending in the database, go ahead and let us know um, if there were no shows. That really helps uh, Adele out a lot. And when she looks at, I'm not really sure. I don't, I've never actually seen what she looks at. I mean, I have once, but I blocked it out because it was a lot of information. But when there, I'm assuming that when there are holes and people taken out, it sends up a red flag. And then if you have that information in the bottom of your email, it saves us a lot of time from having to hunt down that information. So um, also, if you have a swimmer diver, please make sure that you're communicating with the dive referee. And because um, I mean, diving is an individual event. So if you have a swimmer diver that doesn't show up, they're still a no show and they're still out for all levels. Um, if you have a no-show due to a COVID-19 situation, a quarantine situation, let us know, and it'll be treated as a medical scratch. And I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but um, I just wanna make sure that we get through all of this um, in an appropriate amount of time. All this, slow, this slide is saying is that it doesn't matter if your dive competition is before or after the swim competition. If you have a swimmer diver and they are a no-show, then they are, they're out. So if your swimming portion takes first and your athlete shows up and swims all their events, but then they were also a diver and they don't show up for diving two days later, then it, that's still considered a no-show for an individual event and they will be removed from successive levels. Uh, medical scratches, if someone gets sick during, meet, during a meet or right before you're supposed to go to districts or regionals, communicate that with the meet referee they'll medically scratch the individual from the meat. You cannot medically scratch for a single event. So if your kid just wakes up and decides they don't wanna swim the 500 free, you can't just scratch for that one particular event. They're either in or they're out. So if you need to medically scratch them, they are out until they present a doctor's note that they are cleared to come back and participate. Um, and that does not mean a doctor's note by the doctor that is also the meat referee. So if you are there in the capacity of a meet referee or an official, 
We do not want you clearing athletes for participation because we want you to focus on one or the other. So they have to actually see someone who is not participating in the meet. There have been instances where um, a kid will be swimming and will jam a finger and the athletic trainer is working with that, that athlete and they may miss an event because they're still with the trainer, but then the trainer will clear them to come back. And that is, that is acceptable. So as long as a medical professional is clearing them, um, then they are, they can come back to participation. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Melissa because I've talked enough for now um, to talk about district entries and the process, um, that process. Thank you so much, Kelly, and good evening, everyone. Um, as soon as you've downloaded the database and you found the database on the uh, Dropbox that Kelly has created, um, import it into your meet manager and then send the entry file, which for most of you who are doing 1A and 2A, you've already done because those meets began this week and send it to the high school that is hosting the event. Send it also please to all of the coaches who are in that district. Please be aware that sometimes, and it's not unusual because you're attaching a zipped file, the uh, district uh, or, or, or the school may not allow that zipped file to get there. So also please send an email to the coaches and let them know without any attachments that you've just sent them the zipped file. Uh, as soon as they import the file, uh, it will, you, you need to tell them here is, here is the deadline date and time for entries. After that time, no entries are accepted. Um, please make sure that they load all of their eligible athletes, all of them, whether they're going to use them or not, from that database, that homeschool report that, that uh, Kelly was talking about, that they've imported all those names and that you've been able to receive them. Team Manager Lite is, is a bit of a challenge. If a coach is using Team Manager Lite, they cannot shut down and resume later once they shut down that's the end of it, they won't get back to it. So that's a tough one and you have to kind of let them know that. Kelly, I'm not able to advance this to the next screen for whatever reason. Thank you. Once the entry is complete and they send it to you, make a copy of their entries as they load it into high tech and send them that copy. If they have no times in there, they are allowed up until the entry deadline to put in a proper seed time. But if they're going to keep it as a no time, that's fine. Send it to them and make sure that they understand that these are how their entry is loaded. The first thing I do, to be honest with you, when I load it in there, the first thing I do is go and do an exception report. We have some, some screenshots later on that show you how to run. There are two different types of screenshots. One that is uh, for individuals. You can only enter four individuals into an event. The other is for a, um, a, for a team to make sure, or excuse me, for the individual, they can, they can only have two individual events. But for a team, they can only have four individuals in an event. And you have to run both of those exception reports. If there is an over entry found, send that copy, that report to the coach and let them choose who they're gonna withdraw. Uh, if you don't and you get to the meet and you find out that unfortunately you forgot or, or your high tech operator forgot to run an exception report, unfortunately it is done alphabetically by last name. So if uh, Willa Mosky is their number 150 freestyler um, and is one of five 50 freestylers that was entered, Willemowski is out and cannot swim and cannot score, they're out. So it's really important that whoever is doing high tech um, make sure that they, that they take care of that. Um, okay. As soon as you've sent all of the entry confirmations to the coach, the coach within 48 hours, it's your opportunity now to be able to create the psych report. And what I do with the psych sheet is I seed it, I go into the run, en run menu, 
and no points for all the divers. I also go into the relays and, and we should have a slide on this later um, and put no names there. When you're doing the site sheet, it should only be where the teams are seated and not who the teams are putting into their relays because that's not fair. It's not fair for the rest of the coaches in that district to be able to see that. So I send out a psych sheet and I make sure that they are good, everything is there and they're all happy with it. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Um, there is only one break built into the district database. It's that mandatory uh, 15 minute break after the 50 freestyle. Uh, the districts can add uh, additional breaks if they'd like to. Um, a couple of the districts that I'm doing are doing the region breaks, which you see on here after the 50 freestyle. There's still that, that 15 minute break, but then there's a 10 minute break after the two free and a five minute break um, after the breaststroke going into the freestyle relays. Another thing that I had to change, and I think this is particular to my program, is I had to check the intervals uh, between heats. It, for me, it came up as one minute and I had to go in and, 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 and click it down to 30 seconds. Likewise, the same with the backstroke interval. I don't know why, usually we give them an extra 15 seconds to get out of the pool but on my program, it popped up as a minute. So check your intervals um, so that when you're creating your timelines, they're, they're um, you know, accurate to how you're gonna run the meet. I think that's just my program that did that. Thanks, Kelly. You tell me when to stop, cause I'll keep going. So here's how you do the psych sheets. You pull it up under admin it under reports, and then you go down to psych sheets. This is what the, um, what it looks like, you click all events. Then over on the far right where the red arrow, it says, how many relay names are we gonna display? And you wanna make sure that you put in zero for your psych sheet so that nobody else sees the names of the uh, swimmers that are gonna swim and in what order also. Relay cards, am I still doing this, Kelly? You tell me when to stop. <laughs> Okay, you're doing, you're doing a great job. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> um, relay cars um, usually very often get produced out of high tech. Relay cards need to have the full name, the first name and the last name. Very often, you know, we'll see Ali, you, you know, Ali, and then uh, Frida, and then Wilma, and then Allie again, and we don't know who their last names are. So please make sure that they use their first and their last names so that you know who is actually swimming. The names on the relay cards that High Tech produces are listed left to right. So I know very often we want to do it vertically, but that's not how it works for High Tech. It goes left is the first swimmer, right is the second swimmer, and that's what they look like right there with their first and last names. When you, I, very often coaches will write in names and then they'll change their mind based on who's doing what so far in the meet. And then they'll draw arrows and all the rest of it. What's so much more helpful is if you look down on the bottom, if you wanna change their order, write the number and then circle it in pen. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I would ask coaches, if you don't have very good handwriting, that's okay. We understand there's somebody on that team who does have good handwriting so that we can understand what they're saying, what you're writing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. I didn't realize you guys were seeing this double screen. So oh. I'm going to switch this real quick so that it's um, easier for everyone to see. While you're doing that, Kelly, I just want to say that... Um, Relays has primarily been and continues to be the number one reason why there is a delay for results getting published. Um, the whole relay names issue. I don't know why this keeps doing this. Oh, mine looks good. It's just the one screen now. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, yeah, I. Correct. De Adele is absolutely right. You know, she's always uh, tracking down because as you are inputting the names from the relay cards, 
and there are eight lanes and you only have seven cards and you forget to look for that school, that relay card that is missing or those names that are missing or for whatever reason, something didn't get saved. So it's really important whoever is running high tech to make sure you go through and you have all four names listed and that all eight lanes in every heat or all schools have a, a, a name in there as a relay card. And I agree, Adele is, I hear it from her all the time. She's my roommate at States and I hear her writing and calling and talking to the computer. So that is really important to make sure that you have everybody. Yes. At the very, very end of the meet. So this is the biggest issue and it happens all the time. Not so much um, perhaps at regionals and districts, but certainly happens at states. An athlete is only allowed to swim two individual events and two relays. And sometimes when it gets to the 400 free relay, which are the last two events of the high school session, uh, a coach will put in an athlete that's already swum two individual events and put them into the two medley, two free, and now the uh, 400 free relay. Unfortunately, when that happens, that individual event and that, that individual and that 400 free relay get disqualified. The individual no longer is allowed to advance onto the next level because that individual has swum five events and the four free relay operate, uh, uh, team doesn't get to uh, advance either. So at the conclusion of the meet, you must run an exception report. The only thing that should come up if you, well, you're not gonna have this. I was gonna say a swim off, but the only time there's gonna be a swim off is at state. There should not be any over entries. If there are, you have a problem. And I'll tell you, it's, it's very easy to click the wrong names in the 400 free relay cards. It's very easy to do that. Um, pull out all the cards, check them, make sure that you didn't accidentally click on the wrong name as you were loading it into the relay. If there is an over entry, the high tech operator must show it to the meet referee and the meet referee has to help resolve this issue. Um, don't do it yourself and, and think that, you know, you'll take care of it without the meet referee. That doesn't work so well. Next one, there we go. Here's how you run the exception reports. Remember that an individual can over enter and a team can over enter. So when you're taking in the entries, make sure you look in two different areas. So you click down on reports, it comes up exception report, and then go over to the far left where it says, if you look at the left arrow and look at that box, look right above the box, it says max entries. Exceeds max entries, Adele has already put in there the max entries, and then click report up in the top right, create report. If you create a report that says no data, then you're all good. The next one is for the team. And I think that was on the next slide, Kelly. It is. So on the next one is for the team. Um, oh, diving, okay. Uh, is there another screen after this that shows how to do exceeds? Maxima entries per team. Okay, okay, see how this one says no data. Okay, skip now to the next one. Thank you. See with the red arrow here where it says exceed maximum entries per team per event. You click on that radio button. You are going to have to type in the number four and then create the report. It doesn't save, Adele, and Adele has tried multiple times to get that in there and it won't save. You will have to put in four and create report. If you find, and this is the example that I used with the 50 free that they've in, that they put in five swimmers um, for the 50 free, this is the exception report that will show you that they've overentered and that you have to contact the coach uh, and get them to decide which 50 freestyler they're pulling out. Um, That's assuming that it's caught at the site sheet. And hopefully it is. And mm -hmm. if it isn't, 
then and you you swim them and the the results get sent to Adele it is the out it goes by alphabetical Mm -hmm. order of the last name on who's going to get pulled out it doesn't go by seed time or Mm -hmm. or the time they swam at the meet it's alphabetical it doesn't go by grade level either i've had people ask if they could advance all their seniors nope um true story it was either, I don't know, around 2016, 2017, a school entered 10 athletes into the 50 free, tried to tell me that they didn't know. Um, if another reason that you need to use the database that Adele has created is that it has these limits already in it. If you use it properly, you can't over enter. And if you try to enter that fifth or that sixth or their seventh swimmer, you get an error code that you have to f- manually click off of so this i don't know if it was i don't know who did the entries but the person that did the entries had to click off that error code five times and the girl whose last name was like yarbo or something started with a y um defending she was a senior she was defending her state uh championship in the whatever yeah the 50 free from the year before and um yeah she got she got disqualified because she was the 10th swimmer on the list So I've sent the coaches multiple emails and um, it it still happens every year. So I think between this, if we could get this under control, the over entries and the, um, which also goes hand in hand with the names on the relay cards. Cause if you don't put the names into the relay cards that can cause an over entry between those two things, I think we'd see our, our disqualifications drop significantly. Mm-hmm. And, and the speed of uploading the, uh, the databases Absolutely. so that you know what's going on. Absolutely. Um, all right, Adele, do you wanna just briefly touch on like what happens when someone scratches an athlete out of the database? Right, that they, it will show up. I mean, to, it'll be flagged to me, that's why there are to be no scratches, um, they're not allowed. So um, if they, um, uh, you know, any, I mean, the exception reports will show any anomalies, which should be um, fixed ahead of the meet. Um, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read the slide while I'm talking and of course everybody can read it with me. This is why I don't like doing this. <laughs> um, but the yeah, don't don't go ahead and scratch somebody thinking, oh, they didn't show and we'll just do it. We'll just scratch them from that event. Or even if they had, you know, say a coach had put 10 athletes in the 50 free. And so the high tech operator finds out, OK, I know which six they want out. I'll just scratch those athletes out. no you have to actually delete that athlete and put them back in in the corrected events because it will flag as a scratch, which I have to um, do my due diligence and follow up on, which thereby delays results. Yes. Um, And do you want to, I think next is the the codes. Yes, yeah, to... um, just to show that specifically how to put in a no-show, don't scratch them literally in the finals time, put NS um, if they don't show. Next slide. Um, There is a DQ code that I'm actually seeing less, so kudos to everybody out there. Um, But it, it does every season come up where somebody thinks they're doing me a favor, I think, and puts a no show penalty no, it, it, I actually need the NS, not the disqualification. Next slide. Speaking of DQ codes. Back to Melissa. Yeah, okay. So um, if, all, if any of you uh, uh, participated, and I think it was in September, August or September, we went over some of the rules. And first of all, I want to thank Adele because we started seeing some strange DQs at states last year and, and a lot of swimmers advancing last year, uh, committing repeated many, many swimmers DQs that we hadn't seen very often. 
and certainly not when you get to the state level. And it caused us a lot of questions. And so I asked Adele to send me all from every single district and region and state meet we had last year, all the DQ results. And I went over those before uh, in our previous webinar. What startled me a little bit is that DQ, DQ codes were being put in for things that are not disqualifications in high school swimming. And that really, I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna show you that there are about maybe as many as 10 swimmers who should have advanced that based on the DQ that was put in did not advance because they are USA swimming disqualifications and not high school disqualifications. I'm hoping that whoever was running high tech really didn't didn't know the particulars of those disqualifications. And so that's why this particular section is in here this year. To find out what the D, oh, go back. To, to get to the, the DQ code list, you go to reports, administrative, DQ code list, and then this little screen pops up on the bottom right, click create report. Then when you create the report, you get this next slide. You get a list like this that goes over all these codes. It's backstroke, butterfly, freestyle, it's, it's relays, it's other things. This, what was show, this is what was showing up, and I can give you the exact number, um, excuse me, non-continuous turning action. There were eight. There were eight that showed up. That is not a high school disqualification. It is a USA Swimming one, but Adele doesn't get the USA Swimming backups. She gets only the high school ones. So I'm concerned that maybe eight people were disqualified for a non-continuous turning action who should not have been disqualified. That is the same for delish, de, uh, delay initiating pull and delay initiating turn which was, there was another one. So there's a total of nine in the backstroke that perhaps should have advanced, but maybe the USA codes were used or, or, or something screwed up there. So please ask your high tech operators to print out the DQ code list and make sure that 2I, 2S, 2T are never marked into the system. And the reason for that is in high school, a swimmer may turn over to the breast and kick or glide into the wall once they're inside the flags. It's a very slow thing. If you're doing an observation meet, yes, that's a USA swimming disqualification. It is not a high school disqualification. So there should be no DQs for non-continuous turning action, delay initiating pull, delay initiating turn. On the next screen, there are a couple of, of other ones. A declared false start. Declared false starts, there were how many of those? Oh, I didn't mark that. There were a few declared false starts. That should never be a code. Delay of meet is not a code. A delay of meet, the swimmer is either there ready to swim at the start of his race or her race, which is at the long whistle to step up. They are either there or they are a no-show. Now, if, if something happened and your high-tech operator as a meet referee, you're putting in seven R into the DQ code list, please explain that in the body of email why there is a delay of me, but it's they're either there to swim or they're a no-show. There's no in-between. So there were two of those. So I guess we're now up to a total of 11. So, so those kind of things need to be explained and we just wanna make sure that um, you, you know the folks advancing can advance. Um, I, I know the delay initiating turn uh, delay initiating pull, that also showed up in IMs and medley relays. So there were a total of 12 disqualified for a USA swimming violation in the backstroke prevented to, to advance, including relays that should not have. 
And so thank you, Adele, for going to all that work, sending that information to me. But we're going to be watching that a little bit more closely this year and making sure that we're advancing the right swimmers and, and not disqualifying and not preventing swimmers who should be able to advance from advancing. And I know all the referees and, and, um, and experienced high-tech operators probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, before we go to the next slide, which is the um, post-meet high-tech high -tech post meet checklist, um, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before. So when there's a system in place for when you disqualify a swimmer that they have to be notified, the coach has to be notified, the swimmer, someone has to be notified. There was an incident, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, where nobody knew that the, I think it was a relay that was disqualified and nobody knew until the results were posted on our website the, a day later. So um, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know if, if someone told the kid or thought they told the kid or something. I don't remember the, all of the circumstances. Like I said, it was a while ago. Uh, it was pre-COVID, so it, it was probably two years ago. Um, but uh, we just wanna make sure that we're following those procedures that are in place so that everybody is aware that there is a disqualification. Or and what was the other one that caused a real, um, someone was supposed to be disqualified, but they weren't? I think it, that, that was that same district put meet. into the results? Well, I think what happened was the high-tech operator disqualified the wrong team, but the other team was notified and it was just a big mess there. And, mm -hmm. and, and, th and that was that issue. You know, the other thing that, Kelly is probably worth mentioning is seven Y unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, it, it, do you want to go over the reporting for unsportsmanlike behaviors? Yeah, and I I just want people to know that this is an available option. Like I don't want people um, to start disqualifying kids left and right because they don't like the way that they're acting. Um, if if a student is exhibiting is exhibiting egregious behavior, they swear at a referee or um, they push someone in the pool, or they're, they're being overly aggressive. You have the right to disqualify them from the meet, to eject them from the meet. Um, that's a right that all of our FHSA certified officials have. Um, so I, I, like I said, I wouldn't recommend, like if you're having a bad day and someone's rubbing you the wrong way, I wouldn't recommend, you know, you just start tossing kids out. But you know, if someone gets out of the pool and they take a swing at the kid next to them, like that's a problem. If someone jumps out of the pool and calls you all kinds of names and starts swearing at you because they don't like a call you made, that's a problem. And you do have the right to eject that, um, that athlete from the meet. Same with the coaches. The, co the coaches are not, um, I know that swimming, just like every sport is a, is a culture amongst itself. Like, and there's certain levels of behavior that are expected um, uh, among all of our coaches in any sport. Um, and I know that a lot of times you have like personal relationships with the coaches, but they still shouldn't be aggressive with you. They should, no one should ever swear at you ever. Um, they, they shouldn't be calling. I mean, I'm talking about real egregious behavior, like behavior. That's just not something that you want to model for student athletes. That option does exist. Um, I, like I said, I wouldn't recommend you start tossing people out, but um, it is, there's, there's a, a process that we follow. There's a form that needs to be filled out if you were to eject someone from a meet, but um, it is, it does exist. It's called an AT6. You may have heard of it before. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct form. We've also used the AT6 for miscellaneous things like weird things that happen, like the, the lights go out during the meet. Um, you can fill out an AT6 miscellaneous. So some of, of the referees that have been around for a long time have probably seen the AT6 um, before. But if you if, if something rises to the level that you feel like this person needs to be removed from the premises immediately for the safety of everyone else, then you, you, you can eject them and then you would fill out that, that AT6. You can also, and I had someone contact me this or contact me about this, if you know the coach, if you have a personal relationship with the coach and you can see that their kid's behavior is getting out of control, go talk to the coach and be like, hey, you need to calm your kid down. So, or if you, I don't recommend talking to the athletes, like 
in a kid's brain that usually doesn't ever go well. Um, so if you know the coach, you can talk to the coach. You can de-escalate the situation. You can try and calm everybody down or, you know, do whatever you would do to like de-escalate the situation before you start tossing people out. But if, if someone is, if things are about to get unsafe, or like I said, someone comes out taking a swing or swearing at you, then there are avenues that you can take. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with that. So this is our post meet checklist that Adele put together a few years ago. Um, it's. I'll eight. just say a couple of things yeah. about it, Kelly, if that's okay. okay. I mean, everybody can read it, of course. Um, but it, it, I cannot stress enough how, you know, 99.9% .9 of issues would disappear if people just did these, what is it, eight points on the checklist, yeah. five tops, 10 minutes, um, verify that there are no scratches, because if you find it, you can resolve it there instead of me having to go chasing it after the fact, trying to reach folks via email, gets to the weekend, that kind of thing. Um, and you can verify, you know, that there are no scratches by running a report of the results, checking the box that says include scratches, and you'll, they'll know right there and then if they made the mistake of having a scratch in the database, and it can be resolved. Um, if there was a relay that was a no-show, be sure to remove everybody's name off that relay before backing it up and sending it. Um Information, information, I'm a great believer in wanting as much or more information than I probably need. Um, so put stuff in the body of the email as, you know, about medical stuff, anything. Um, anything that you may or may not think is relevant. It's amazing how sometimes those little tidbits of information help to resolve an issue. Um, check that all the DQ codes are correct or that they have a code. Sometimes there isn't a code that fits it. Of course, right in hand with what Melissa is saying, follow the protocol for the correct codes. Um, they, uh, I mean, I, do your exception reports. Um, just, you know, like I said, I know everybody can read. Another biggie, this every single year, multiple, multiple times, there is no relay names. I have the results and no names for the relay. Most often than not, it's the 400 free at the end. I know everybody's rushing to get out. Please just, you know, take those few extra minutes, and do this checklist before you send us the backup. That's it from me. And I will also, so I have this in a Word document that I will send out to everyone as well. So you have it. Um, so I don't know what's going on with, uh, I don't, I haven't heard the level of, of um, shutdowns and quarantines and that kind of thing that we had last year. Um, but if you do run into a COVID-19 situation where your kids can't come or someone, an, an athlete is not there because they're, they're quarantined, um, it will be managed like a medical scratch. So if the kid is, you know, cleared from quarantine before the next round, they can come back and be, um, participate on a relay. Um, I don't, I don't know what kind of documentation. I, I didn't get any documentation when I got my, my test or negative test or whatever. So, um, if you have documentation, just like if you have a doctor's note, send it to me and we'll uh, make sure that kid's available to participate on a relay. Um, but just know that if you have any COVID-19 situations that it will be treated like a medical scratch. Okay. So we have some questions. Can you guys see the Q and A? I'll just read through them real quick. So as the host team, can we ask the coaches if they've had any athletes that are no-shows for staging purposes due to COVID protocols? I would say yes. All right. Meet committee is six members, all coaches, no combination of coaches and officials. Correct. All coaches. Um, it should be five with an extra because um, if you have someone who's involved in the issue or problem or conundrum, you would want to remove them from the committee. So have an odd number. And yes, it should be all coaches. Scratch procedure, go through event by event and heat by heat at the coaches meeting, correct? Coaches are not able to approach the high-tech operator prior to the meet and scratch that way. 
I, I personally, you'll, you'll have a coaches meeting that will go on for 45 minutes. If you do that, um, just, I, I sent, uh, I have a meet on Friday. I sent all the coaches and said, if between now and Friday, you know that you're not going to have some swimmers show up, hand me a list. Or let me know now that, you know, they're going to a band competition or whatever it is. Um, I am not going to do that at a coach's meeting or I won't survive a coach's meeting. Mm -hmm. So that is not going to happen. And I would say, I mean, correct. You don't want coaches. We've had coaches just walk up and start scratching and moving people and it it becomes a real mess. So, yes, typically. um, But if it saves a kid from being disqualified and no one has swum yet, like no one's in the water, things haven't started yet. Um, the proper procedure is to go through the meet referee, but if it, if it saves a kid from being disqualified, then let the coach talk to the high-tech operator. I, I'm all for, how about parents? I wish, we cannot, we cannot object parents. If you have an issue with a parent, there should be an administrator on site and they will deal with the parents. Um, quick question regarding dissemination of relay cards. Is there a specific, specific procedure you're looking for at districts or regionals, or can they be handed out during warmups or at the coaches meeting or in the coaches packet? Yeah. However you want to give them out. I stand at the gate at state. So if you've never, if we've never met in person, we will meet when you come in and I give you your relay cards. So however you want to hand them out. Is- well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that most district and relay hosts uh, whoever's running high tech will produce the relay cards and have them handed out to the team in packets along with heat sheets. Um, so, so it's not something, and the, and the only time that it's delayed is then when there's just, you know, a school has one relay and, and they're forgetting about it. And then it sits with the announcer or it sits with the meet referee to pick it up. Yes. Uh, meet committee does not have athlete representatives. No, the no. Meet does not this, is not, representatives. this is not USA swimming and you are not required to have an athlete representative on the meet committee. And Joe Massimino for the win meet mobile. Melissa and I were talking about this this morning. So typically we do not, we prefer that meet mobile be turned off. It runs in the background of high tech. Adele, are you impressed with how much I've learned over the past seven years? Uh, it runs in the background of high tech. And if you let it, it will just push out the results to the app. And for a long time, we said no because of the competitive advantage and people whose meet is not for the next few days, blah, blah, blah. Um, Last year with COVID, we did allow it because of the restrictions of um, the facilities put in place on spectators. And I don't know how many facilities are restricting spectators, but I've read a few um, meet letters and there are some that are only allowing like two spectators per athlete. So I'm going to say that again, Meet Mobile can be used this year. Yes. Thank you, Joe. In the event of a DQ, that is a DQ by USA Swimming versus FHSA rule, i.e. backstroke, how does a high-tech operator handle the result? Well, this only comes into play when it's it's an observed meet. If it's not an observed meet, then it's no DQ. But Adele will tell you how to create that yeah so um the meet referee i'm guessing is the person that would um keep track of the usa swimming you'll i I mean i would run it as the fhsaa under their rules but somebody is keeping track of the dqs that would be usa swimming and at the end of the meet um you would save the one database and then save save it again as as a usa swimming sanctioned meet and put in the dq codes that are relevant to usa swimming and that would be the database that goes to usa swimming you have to save it under a different file name and put usa observe and then um yeah sometimes they ask you to put in the observation number up in the in the, in the title of it sometimes they don't um but but then you know, and it's only in that USA observation data play, database where you would be putting in delay initiating turn, delay initiating pull, USA specific DQs. Um, does the school year need to be listed for each athlete? 
Uh, it's not a requirement anywhere. I know people get real upset about it not being listed. Um, everyone has every kid's grade level on the home campus roster that I sent them because I include them. So yes, it should, but it's not a written requirement anywhere that it is included, but it does help. It also is um, apparently helps for um, recruiting purposes for colleges. <clears throat> what exact address should the meet referee use to send the no-show list to? It's swimming at fhsaa.org and I will send that to you when I send out the um, link to this recording and all the supporting documents, I'll make sure that you have the correct email address. That email, swimming at fhsaa.org actually comes to all three of us. So you don't have to send it to swimming and then also copy Adele and Melissa. We, we all, the three of us are all on that distribution list. So we'll get all of your, um, all of your backups and questions and fun stuff. All right, we have, uh, there are, I don't think restrictions are as prevalent as they were last year, but there definitely are some, um, some pockets in the state that are still under restrictions. Um, <clears throat> I know the Long Center still has a, a sheet that they've um, distributed that I've posted on our website. So, okay. Um, oh, one hour and 51 seconds. If publishing results to meet mobile, should we choose not to publish uh, the scores? No, you can, put, you can use the scores. Yeah, it's, I mean, for the benefit of the people that are not allowed in the venue because of the restrictions to the number of people, a number of tickets that are being sold or whatever other venue restrictions are in place. I'd like to also add that I would encourage anybody to um, call me when I, if I email you, I, my cell phone number is on the bottom of the email automatically. Um, I may not always be able to answer, but I will always call you back, so. Um, you know, I'd much prefer to have open communication and if there's any issues. Make myself some notes tomorrow. I'll forget everything I said. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming up. Um, we are right at one hour, so I'm going to go ahead and um, we will stop here for tonight. If you think of any questions, um, you guys are very welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to sit with us um, to go through all this. I hope that it saves someone from being disqualified um, and I hope that it helps to get your results posted quickly. And I really hope that you guys all have an excellent postseason. and I look forward to seeing everybody down in Stewart. So thank you very much, everybody. And um, I hope everyone has a great night. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.